If I claim to be a prophet and all of my prophecies have been wrong and I stand up in the pulpit on Sunday morning and tell you that there's getting ready to be a revival in the black community and it's going to start in the South. And, and I blame the racism on the media and Black Lives Matter and all of this stuff. And, and it's the devil doing that and all of this stuff. Would well, you think I'm kind of like, wait a minute. Will your antennas go up and you say, wait a minute, what is he talking about? Well, our buddy, false pastor, Kent Christmas, back in the news again. This is one of video. I got several videos coming that's dealing with people. But he's got to be on the spotlight again for his Sunday service where he's talking crazy. And if you are not familiar with them or you need a refresher, let's remember what he said about his prophecies, getting defensive about his prophecies of his false prophecies about the election. And then about his prophecies about this death angel that basically is going to bring people, take them out of the White House, basically in a coffin and any other Democratic type people that that's going to happen. So take a, a, a look at these clips real quick and we'll talk. The problem with so many Christians is they don't understand prophecy. I have people email and say, you are a false prophet because you prophesied that Donald Trump would be voted back in. I did and he was. Now, if you really want to deal with this, how about the fact that you stole it from them and you put somebody else in there illegally? But in the eyes of God in the court of heaven today, the president of the United States is Donald J. Trump. That's all I prophesied. That's what God said. That the enemy is manipulating in this nation. Yesterday, when God began to prophesy, and you've heard me say it here recently, because I heard the Lord tell me, he said, I'm going to loose a death angel in the earth. And this morning I was in prayer and I was reflecting on that because I realized it was a very strong word. I, I really, I, I'm not just slinging stuff out when I prophesy. I'm hearing what the Lord has to say and I understand the impact of it. The Lord spoke to me, he said, and it's the same angel that I loosed in Egypt. Man, I feel the sovereignty of the Lord. They ain't gonna be voted out. They're gonna be removed out. So there you have it. That's him where I made a video talking about him that short, not uh, too long ago. But Sunday, he's back in the news and he starts off talking about this revival that's going to happen in the South with the black community or this and that and kind of stuff. I was watching these brothers sit here and the Lord uh, has really begun to drop in my spirit that there is a great... <clears throat> I don't want to say revival, but the Lord says that there is a great movement of the power of God coming out of the black community. And the Lord says because slavery started in the South, this movement will start in the South. And God says there is, there is an element of anointing that has to be released from the African-American community to facilitate this last move of the Lord. And God said, I'm going to break. He says, this is why, says the Lord, there has been such a spirit that has been released through the media to start racism and Black Lives Matters and all of that stuff 
is because the devil sees what's getting ready God to happen. says, I'm loosing now an angel of death in the earth. And I've been hearing this in the spirit for some time. But the Lord said, even as I moved in the land of Egypt, when I got ready to bring my people out and loosed a spirit of death on the house of Pharaoh and his people, I am now loosing an angel of death, not just in the United States, but in every nation, says the Lord, that has resisted the hand of God. And God said, I'm going to let you behold Psalms 91 with thine eyes, for they will fall on thy right hand, and they're going to fall on thy left hand, but they shall not come nigh unto thy dwelling. For you have asked me, where am I? How many can begin to give you political leaders for the first time that are going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. I am so going to revolutionize this nation, saith the Lord, because this nation, says God, is the gate to the world. And as I move on this nation, God says, this move of the Lord will open the gate that I will flow through and I will begin to hit nations all over this earth. And there will be revival. You will see it in Australia. You will see it in India. You will see it in Pakistan, says the Lord. God said there's such a revival coming to the nation of Cuba. That from one end of the island to the other, they're going to be known as spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, Pentecostal people. And I, in a moment's time, am going to reverse what Castro did over his 40-year reign, 50-year reign. And I'm going to loose revival in that nation by the power of the Lord. It will not come through a missionary, says God, for there is already so much seed in the soil that I'm just going to speak a word to it, says God. And the glory of the Lord shall begin to be released. For you say, Lord, what do we do in preparation? Nothing says God. Stand still and behold. Now, before I go any further, let me make a disclaimer to make sure. You know me, I don't deal with any type of stirring up racial division or race baiting, any types of stuff. I don't deal with that. I'm just a straight shooter. I call things like it is whatever the topic is going to be. But the main focus is somebody that's saying, thus saith the Lord, standing, declaring that the Lord has said this and that when they're not telling the truth. And we call it out on here. And Kent Christmas, if, you know, I set up and I none of my prophecies never come to pass, I'm constantly claiming to be this prophet. And then I'm trying to always justify and make excuses about prophecies. And then I get up in a pulpit on a Sunday morning and tell you, yeah, this revival is getting ready to happen and all of this stuff. I mean, the average person would be like, man, I ain't listening to you. You've been wrong all this time. Boy, I, what makes you going to be right this time? But the funny thing is, the way he sounds, he makes it sound as if racism just popped up out of, you know, the last few years or something. That the media has stirred it up and, it, and, and all of this kind of stuff that it just came out of nowhere. And Black Lives Matter has something to do, you know, helping it along and all of that, when racism is a worldwide issue that's been around for a very long time, worldwide. And I, if I had to bank on it, I'm gonna, you know, if God, one thing I believe that's holding the Lord back from really blessing this nation and other places around the world, I'm going to put racism in the top three. Racism will be in the top three because it doesn't only apply to African Americans, us blacks. I mean, it's all, I mean, look what, how they treat people in other parts of the world and, and including, you know, this somebody, you know, immigrants and everybody else. Look how everyone, the people on the lower end, the ones, you know, uh, how it is in Europe and, and, and whatever other countries where in India, all of it. The racism is rampant and he want to make like all of a sudden, you know, it just kind of sprung up and this big revival is going to happen and this and that is going to start in the South, which I think is hilarious. It's going to start in the South when these same guys were arguing and fighting and didn't want the 
the statues to come down and the Confederate flags and all of this stuff that set up that people got to drive by and look at Robert E. Lee and look at some of these, some of this stuff from, you know, that, that represent, you know, a dark time in this nation. And you got, and, and no, we can't take this down. You, you people, you know, everyone's in an uproar. And then putting all of these laws in place for everything to hold people back in all kinds of ways. And the South has got a long way to go. And it's somehow it's just going to be this, this great revival of some sort. No, you know, these prophets are full of it. <laughs> these prophets are full of it. And then he goes on and then he's talking about, he gets back, as you see in the second clip, where he talks about the death angel again. You see that he, he's, you know, this death angel is getting ready, you know, and, and as he always, when he talks about the death angel, he's always talking about those that don't agree with them, these nationalists. These people that are way out there. If you don't subscribe to their agenda, the death angel is going to get you. Watch out. The death angel is coming upon you. They're wishing death and harm and doom and gloom on top of anybody that don't subscribe to their agenda. That's what it is. And then he's talking about uh, the angel, the revival, and all these parts of the world, as we always talk about, that the, the Bible talks about a great falling away. As we can see, the falling away has begun, and it's falling away. Ain't no revival coming all like this great stir up and all of this stuff. When you got people that deliberately are lying in the name of the Lord. They're lying in the name of the Lord. He's standing up here representing the, the church as, as this pastor and these self-appointed prophets and got every bit of a different excuse after excuse of why their prophecies don't come right. And then their followers make the same uh, excuses and, and, and how dare you try to speak against the prophet. Someone's trying to tell me here yesterday, you know, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, this, that, and that. You're bashing Christians and all of this. You know, these folks, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to call them Christian. I don't know where they're, whatever, if they had a relationship with the Lord at one point and they've fallen away and they're just in a backslidden state, but I'm not going to, until I see evidence of fruit, and I see evidence of the, you know, that they're walking with Christ and walking in the spirit and walking with that, then I'm not going to, I'm going to refrain because right now the evidence show that these folks are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what the evidence show. It doesn't show that they're a true prophet of God when they set up batting old 400 and you keep making excuses for them. You keep They've been dragging these, some of these folks have been dragged along. So, I mean, they've been dragged along for several years now. And they're still, the followers are still making excuses. What, what's going to be the excuse? What's going to be the excuse if things still don't work out the way that they want? How long does this, how long does this, uh, this movie play out? That's what I like to know. How long is it going to play out? Because these people, if you following and listening to this stuff, and you don't, if you haven't caught on to it yet, I don't know what to tell you. I just, I, I it's, it's become a, a, a dangerous, hopeless situation for many. Because many, they just don't want to hear it. They don't want to uh, deal with it. Don't want to talk about it. But here it is, Kent Christmas, sets up there, and that's pretty much your service. Where you're sitting there, that went on. That service there was... I want to say 45, 50 minutes or somewhere in there. I, I, is that the whole service? No preaching of the gospel. I mean, no opening of the Bible. I, I don't know. I mean, but people are going to churches like this. People are sitting under someone like this. And you sit under this. Someone, you know, there used to be a time. I, I mean, years back, and many of you that's been walking with the Lord for a while, you know, a pastor is so, you know, a reverence of, of, of a man or, or somebody, you know, uh, someone walking with the Lord, especially a pastor, there's that reverence there. I, I remember when I used to, um, uh, 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 when I was doing, uh, when I would go to the hospitals and go, you know, as serving as a chaplain and, and, and going around and, and they knew that I was a chaplain. They knew that I represented 
the Lord in not only the hospital, but the Lord and just the respect. And I was younger at that time that you would get from people that they they, they more so respect and, and, and they want to talk to you if there's something going on and, 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 and that they feel like they can share and trust and all of this. How can you trust these phony, false prophet pastors and all of these people with something major going on in your life when a pastor is supposed to be a count, you know, you, you counsel the, the first before even people, families or people get to counselors, marital counselors, family counselors or whatever. The first line is usually the family pastor. If you belong to a church, they'll go to the pastor, talk about maybe little Johnny's acting up. My husband's cheated on me or whatever, whatever. And they talk and try to come, you know, looking for answers and direction and some type of comfort. Would you, would you go, I mean, to go, you know, set up an appointment with the Kent Christmas, with the Hank Kuhneman, you know, with the Dutch sheets, any of these Robin Bullock, you set up an appointment and under them, and these folks are lying in the name of the Lord, and you think the spirit of the Lord, they're not being led by the Lord. That's the thing. You want somebody that's led by the Lord that can help you, guide you in times and trouble when you come for that counsel or seeking that wisdom. They don't They, they don't have that. They're, they're, they're in, under, a, uh, under a delusion. Their minds are twisted. They're blinded by the enemy. So you go to them, you're more so, you're wasting your time because I want to be guided. It was some of the best advice to be able to go, especially um, now and even when I was younger, just to be able to go. And one of the blessings, and I'll I, and I finish up this message with this. One of the blessings I had when I first got saved, I had the opportunity to be like the custodial maintenance man within my church. So I got to see it all behind the scenes, pastors from the community, all types of stuff that's happening and this and that. And I got to see all the, the deacons and ministers and how people conducted themselves more so behind the scenes and, 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 and this on Sunday morning. And I got to see and I watched and there was times. When, you know, when I, when I began to go through some major issues, trying to figure out what do I need to do about this situation? And I remember there was a particular minister that I watched him, how he dealt with people and watched him how during the week, sometime he come in and he'll have his Bible and some of his things and, and try to guide somebody. And when that time came out of the, uh, I chose him. Reverend McIntosh was his name. And, and I chose him. And I sat down with him to try to get guidance because I was a young man. And boy, he led me in a way to where he didn't give it, you know, as some people, you know, just like in counseling, you don't, your job is not to, you basically steer them, steer them in the way that they should go give them these options and that I let, let them pick. And that's what he did with me. And the Lord took over and led me to do the rest. Because it was basically a situation where I was deciding, should I marry this particular person? It was a person that I was wondering, should I marry them? And I did not want to make the wrong decision. It was two things going on. I, I'm sharing this now with you because it may help somebody. Two things. It was me wondering, should I marry this particular person? Even though that they were in the church, even though I knew that they loved the Lord, but something in my spirit wasn't right. I needed guide, advice and guidance. And then another situation was, should I, and the second part of that was, should I, me and my brother, sell the home that we had that my aunt and uncle and everybody else was still living there, but I had some people, my uncle and people, they weren't really helping out in the situation and my aunt was carrying a burden and I was carrying what we were carrying more of a burden. And I, me and my brother just came to the conclusion it's probably best to sell it and have people stand on their own. But I, that was a tough decision. And I, but I needed guidance at that at 24, 25 years old. And the Lord guided me. And what a blessing it was just to be able to have that. And you're not going to get that with these types of people. You're not going to get that 
types of stuff, I wouldn't want some, I mean, they, they might, I mean, I wouldn't want basically to go with somebody that I know that is not walking in the spirit of the Lord, not walking with the Lord, lying because they're lying on the Lord. That anointing, the Lord's anointing, he is, his hand is not going to be upon you when you're deliberately thumbing your nose in his face, acting like you represent him when a lot of them are doing it for fame, fortune, and, and whatever else. As I mentioned before, some of them, as I mentioned before, like there's a lot of them, it's a self-esteem issue. They like to be seen. You know, the Troy Blacks and a lot of them, uh, they, they like to be seen. They want to be in the uh, uh, media. They want to uh, sh the light shine on them as if they're important. The cat curves and all of them think that they're important. That's what they want. But it boils down to some type of self-esteem issue. And that's unfortunate because, you know, God loves us all the same. We're all equal in his eyes. He loves us. He desires us to have a relationship with him. That's what he wants. He wants us to be, you know, close to him and intimate so he could allow, allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to speak to us and guide us to where we need to do in life. We don't have to fake and come up with some, you know, our, our own phony, you know, make up a gift that, you know, uh, 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 walk in a gift that wasn't meant for us or anything like that, or pretend, or make up a gift. Because some of these, you know, spiritual gifts are made up, some of these gifts that, uh, and all of this stuff. But, you know, it's sad. We'll continue to pray. We'll continue to call it out. We'll continue to talk about issues the church run away from. Maurice Braxton is my name. Evangelism for God is the channel where we take Satan head on, and we punch him right up between the chops. People get mad. Oh, they are dirty, mean messages unsubscribe, whatever, whatever. We're marching on anyway, because the Lord is, we know the Lord is watching. We know his judgment has come upon a whole lot of these people that are running around here doing this and their followers, you're in great danger if you continue to follow them and you better flee Why you still can. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.